This is a fantastic grinder with one major problem. Nope, it's not the weird sounds or even this dreaded catch cup. Oh, I have a lot to say about this, but you're going to have to wait a bit to listen to that rant. We've tested the hell out of this grinder for the last six months, so here's a brutally honest review of the fellow old Gen 2. Well, as promised, that was a custom track that was composed just for you, for getting us way over 500 likes on the Aurea video. Thank you so much, and maybe we can beat that on this video. Okay, so I had the opportunity to speak at Rico in Portland earlier this year, and even had my first experience of the SEA Expo. It was amazing, exceeded all expectations. I got to meet some wonderful people in the industry, and had a lot of people come up to me and ask if I was Aramse. Well, I'm Raghunath, this is Namisha, and we both run a company called Aramse, so hopefully that clears up any confusion. Anyway, back to the old Gen 2. Now, given how long it's taken us to review this, I would not be surprised if the Gen 3 drops tomorrow, but what can I say? We're staying true to our brand name, Aramse, which for those of you who don't know, means to slow down and be at ease. But jokes aside, it's really hard convincing companies to ship stuff to India, but because of all of you, we're steadily growing and starting to see brands take us more seriously. But anyway, we have a lot of ground to cover, pun intended, so let's get right to it. Okay, this grinder was sent to us to test and review, no money exchange hands, and they don't get to watch this before any of you do. And as always, a massive thanks to Benki Brewing Tools for helping with all of the logistics. You guys are amazing. Okay, it's a well-known fact that fellow make beautiful products and the ode is no exception. It takes a lot of understanding of how form works to be able to make boxy look sexy. Now, this isn't the best looking product, that would be the EKG by a mile, but having studied the design carefully, I think the reason the Ode stands out from the crowd is because they've essentially taken a form that's very familiar in the coffee world, that of the iconic EK43, and squarified it. I'm pretty sure that isn't a word, but you get what I mean. It's familiar, yet so different, and that's what makes it so interesting to look at. It's a powerful design tool. So it's a really nice looking grinder. And at this price point, the build quality is fine. And it has a good mix of metal and plastic parts like the hopper and the chute. Okay, with this one, I think I'd like to get the bad stuff out of the way first. So let's start with the inspired catch cup. So the one on the first gen Ode was already a bit girthy. And this one is even more so. Even with my massive hands, it isn't particularly comfortable to handle. It is really well made though, so I'll give it that. Fully stainless steel if I'm not mistaken and has a really nice finish. But then you take a peek inside and you see these odd looking protrusions. For a company that designs beautiful products that are really nice to use, it just feels like these fins were given about as much thought as Elon Musk gives his tweets. It's ironic, right? This catch cup has more retention than the grinder itself. Just look at this. Such thin strips of metal that create sharp acute angles it's just an invitation for coffee grounds to take permanent residence. The vertically mounted burrs combined with a new feature that we'll talk about a little later on has nearly eliminated retention, yet here I am tapping vigorously on this thing, trying to get the grounds out. It's a bit ridiculous to be honest. Now, I do like that the magnet helps the catch cup snap in place, but I also wish the bottom of the catch cup was flat because this bump is yet another place for coffee to hang out, forcing me to tap some more. Luckily, I'm a trained percussionist, so I try and have some fun with it. Yes, this may all seem small and nitpicky, but I brew a lot of coffee and I find this deeply frustrating. I mean, I can't be the only one, right? And don't even get me started on the lid of the catch cup. What is this? Seriously, it looks like a cheap third party accessory. I mean, I've gained a decent understanding of things like extraction, particle size distributions, and even water chemistry for coffee. But for the life of me, I can't figure out how to get this lid to sit right. Luckily, the new feature that I mentioned means that I can dispose of this responsibly. Whew. Felt good to get that off my chest. Now we can move on to happier things. Oh wait, actually, 
hang on a second, I have one more thing to complain about. So if you remember in the Time More Sculptor review, I talked about how much I like the sound of that grinder. That unfortunately is not the case here. Okay, it's not the worst I've heard and it isn't that loud either. But if I had to describe it in one word, it's just a bit rattly. The Ode makes all kinds of sounds and pretty much all of them are a bit jarring, with the auger rattle being the worst by far. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, then listen to this. If you're an Ode owner, then you're familiar with this sound, but the first time you heard it, I bet you thought your grinder broke. In the sculptor, the beans sound more like they're having a relaxing massage. Here, it sounds a little bit like torture. Swap the stock burrs out for the SSP ones and things get even worse. I'm talking spine chilling shrieks. From the moment the beans are dropped in, I just find myself restlessly waiting for it to be over. Now, if you're a decent owner, then you're very used to making coffee with earplugs on. I mean, that thing, really makes the Ode sound like Mozart. But luckily, the performance of the Ode, and of course the Decent, more than make up for these auditory flaws. Okay, I'm, I'm really sorry, but there's just one last complaint. I promise I'm done after this. The on-off button does feel and sound a bit cheap. Huh. I'm done. Okay, I've really riled myself up ranting for about three minutes straight, so a like and a sub to the channel would really help me calm down. I'll give you a second before I move on. Okay, so the thing is, once you start brewing with the grounds that come out of the Ode 2, these other annoyances become a lot less annoying. Except for the catch cup. Okay, so you may be familiar with this, but Fellow kind of messed up a little bit with the Gen 1 burrs, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But the Ode Gen 2 now sports the Gen 2 burrs, obviously, which you can also buy separately, by the way. So if you own the Gen 1, then that's actually an excellent upgrade at just $80. But... Is it worth upgrading your entire grinder to the Gen 2 from the Gen 1? To answer that, we need to unpack a few more things, but first, a little bit more about the new burrs. Now, it's always hard to describe how burrs taste, but if I had to give it a shot, then I'd put these somewhere in between the Commandante or any of the K-series grinders from Easy Presso and the SSP multipurpose burrs, but definitely closer to the SSPs. You get significantly more clarity than the hand grinders, but it clearly produces more fines than the SSPs, so it tends to give you a little more body and also seems a little more forgiving. I found it really easy to dial in and get very sweet and balanced brews. The cups that this grinder produces are very approachable and is all that most filter coffee drinkers will ever need. But which self-respecting, self-proclaimed coffee nerd is ever satisfied with what they have? Anyway, this grinder is very similar to its predecessor. It's got the same 140 watt motor that is PID controlled to help keep the RPM consistent during the grinding process. This really helps with grind consistency. It houses 64 mm vertically mounted burrs, which means you can swap them out for the several third party options that are available. But note that Fellow only officially support the SSP multipurpose ones. Anything else you drop into this is at your own risk. It's super easy to do though, and Fellow have a detailed instruction guide on their website, which I've linked to in the description below. You have a large step dial that gives you 31 settings with each click moving the burrs 25 microns. Now, these are fairly large steps, but it's a filter only grinder, so this level of granularity is sufficient. But if you find yourself consistently wanting to be in between clicks, then this is a super easy mod that makes it stepless. Just open it up, remove this small piece and reassemble. You may need to add a few layers of plumber's tape to the threading to reduce lash and prevent the dial from slipping when you're grinding coffee. But that's about it. Now, the stepless mod naturally begs the question, can you calibrate it and do espresso? Well, technically yes, but you'll void warranty, likely reduce the life of the motor, and it's not really designed for this. So at these sizes, the particle distribution isn't great. You also need to ensure that the burrs are really well aligned in order to build any sort of pressure. So it's all just a bit of a faff and I wouldn't really recommend it. And lastly, it has a grounds knocker, which is really nice to look at with the branding and also works pretty well. Okay, so these are all of the things that it shares with the Gen 1, so let's look at what's changed. Other than the burrs, which we've already covered, the Gen 2 now sports a new hopper. You wouldn't really be able to tell until you put the old one next to it. It's a little taller, which means you can put more beans in, but way more important than that, it means that the inner walls now have steeper slopes. Big deal, who cares, right? Well, 
Drop your beans in and watch as they all disappear, as gravity can actually do its thing now. If you've used the Gen 1 ode, then you should have a big smile on your face as you see that last bean disappear without having to poke and prod endlessly. Also, if you've ever brewed with bigger beans like Pacamara's, then you'll notice another small but very welcome upgrade. The anti-popcorning disc is a little more curved and sits a tad higher. So you can now chuck those giant beans in and watch as they too slide elegantly to their death. The new hopper is such a welcome quality of life upgrade and makes the overall user experience so much better. Thank you, fellow. In fact, using this made me realize just how bad the one in the sculptor is. If you missed that review, then click here or in the description below to watch me rant about that hopper. This grinder also has technology borrowed from a hairdryer, an ion generator. Yep, they stuck one right here and it massively reduces static. The Gen 1 was a very messy grinder. This one, Mary Kondo would approve of. This is the reason that I can get away without having to use that dreaded lid. Now, you don't really need to do RDT anymore, but for me, it's just a force of habit and I still think it makes a little bit of a difference. Okay, so I missed mentioning something about the ionizer. Now, over time, in this little cavity, you'll have a buildup of chaff and fines, which will make the ionizer less effective. So all you need to do is take a little brush and brush it out every once in a while. That's about it. It is such a smart little addition that solves a pretty annoying problem and you can already see other grinder manufacturers following suit. Okay, now that we've covered all of the new features, let's come back to the question, is it worth the upgrade from the Gen 1? Well, that depends on how much these issues annoy you. For me, the answer is a big fat yes. The new burrs, improved hopper and next to no static make this a no-brainer upgrade for me, but your mileage may vary. Okay, so right at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that this grinder has one major problem. Nope, it's not the catch cup or the unpleasant sounds. This is an excellent product in spite of those issues. But to talk about this problem, we need to go all the way back to the first ode. I'm talking the Gen 1. Back when that came out, much like the niche did with the Zero for Espresso, it promised to fill a pretty big gap in the market, that of the budget flat burr grinder. At $299, there wasn't any competition. You can see where I'm going with this, right? But hang on. Raising over 1.2 million on Kickstarter, it was the most hyped coffee product of 2020, but they messed up a little with the burrs. For those of you who aren't aware, the Gen 1 burrs had finishing teeth that protruded quite a bit, preventing you from grinding very fine. In fact, they couldn't even go as fine as most people wanted to for pour over. It's a shame because this one issue set them back a good couple of years and in that time, as you may have noticed, a few more grinders have hit the market. In fact, Lance just dropped a monster video comparing a whole bunch of 64mm grinders that are currently available. Check it out if you haven't already. But yeah, so this was just a long-winded way of saying there's a shitload of competition now and the biggest one being from the super hype Sculptor 64S from Time More. Granted, it's a tad more expensive, but has a beefier motor, stepless adjustments, variable RPM, and can also do espresso. It even has a few other workflow advantages. The O2 also happens to be $50 more expensive than its predecessor, which now puts it in the range of some of the DF grinders, which again, have bigger motors and can do espresso. So while the O1 definitely paved the way for the affordable flat burr grinder market, and the Gen 2 is a solid upgrade, it isn't as straightforward of a recommendation as it once was. But all that being said, at around $350, it's still a solid grinder with excellent workflow that can produce delicious coffee and looks pretty damn good. And with that, I think we should wrap this one up. But now we'd love to hear from you. Do you own any of the odes? Are you still happy with them or do you have massive FOMO from all of the other options that are available? And do you agree with our thoughts on this grinder? Let me know in the comments below and as always, thank you so much for hanging out and until next time, grind Aramse. I'm aware that that sounded a bit filthy. You're welcome. And in case you missed these, check out our review of the Timer 078S and the Aurea V3.